We are continuing our conversations with this year's Big Tell Filmmakers. The Big Tell is a regional filmmaking program that offers grants for the production of short documentaries. This year, 10 filmmakers featured stories from California's Great Central Valley. You can watch the Big Tell Showcase right here on KC24 Saturday, November 26th at 8 p.m. And that is where you can see this next film in its entirety. We take a look into the film Stubborn. Let's take a look. So I was in the hospital for about a week and a half until I was admitted into a rehab center. In that uh, rehab center, they had a chapel and there was a piano in there and I was with my mom and I had her wheel me to, the, to that chapel. She had to open the, the top of the piano and I had no idea what I wanted to play, but I remembered a friend and I had made a song that really <laughs> spoke to me at that moment. And I attempted to play it, and when I couldn't even make the chord shape and press down on the keys, I kind of just broke down and started crying. The one thing that I love to do every day, that I look forward to every day, I couldn't do anymore. And that's what broke me. So joining us now is filmmaker Jason Duong and your film, Stubborn. It's an inspirational story about perseverance. So mm. tell, it, tell us what it's about. Set the, set the stage. Okay, so it's about my friend, Jeffrey. He has a rare autoimmune disease called uh, Guillain-Barre, or GBS. That's how mm -hmm. we refer to it. So uh, he's been a musician for most of his life, and um, he got diagnosed in around like 2019. Okay. So what happened was he, he became paralyzed from like the neck down. So then he had to pretty much reteach himself how to play music. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so um, I actually interviewed somebody who had Guillain Bray mm -hmm. after they contracted a virus, uh, and it was it's scary. It's very rare, mm -hmm. but it can it can really do some um, some damage to the way that you you function. Mm -hmm. So what what uh, instruments does he play? So he mainly plays guitar, uh -huh. um, but he does a little bit of everything. He could sing. He uh, plays the drums. Place to the keys. Are like, you a musician? I'm not a musician. I wish I'm a musician, but I, I know. I, really I think that's why I always love stories about musicians because I don't know how to play any instruments, mm -hmm. and it's very uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. So, how did you land on this story for the Big Tell? So, I met my friend Jeffrey on set. We're uh, shooting a short film, and then I think I overheard him telling someone else his story, uh -huh. and so that's how I connected with him because like he was very open to just people he just met. And so I, I just figured, like, oh, if it really is open, like, let's let's have an interview with this. Yeah. And so we, me and him became like really good friends afterwards. So, yeah. Okay, so you met him on set for another film. So this is not mm -hmm. your first film. Mm -hmm. Is it your first documentary? It's not my first documentary necessarily, but it's uh, it's my second time on the Big Tell. Oh, okay. But I, I've been making videos like most of my life, I think. Okay, yeah. so this is sort of your world. Were there, you know, how was this project different than maybe some others that you've done? I think this project was a lot different because like I felt like there was a lot of care I had to make sure in the details with this story because mm -hmm. it's only five minutes so yeah. it's like really really hard to, I had like we interviewed for about an hour mm -hmm. and I had to cut it down to five minutes so um, I just wanted to be like very careful of how I represent him yeah and make sure like it's still like all the emotions of him talking about because it's like a really hard part like time of his life yeah and then you can hear it in his interview like he kind of breaks down a little bit so I want to make sure we captured that too how did you decide is there any um voiceover or narration in your film or is it just is it just him it's just him it's just him how did you land on that on that method uh well so there is spoiler alert but there, there's a point <laughs> There's a point where he talks about his grandma, uh -huh. and unfortunately his grandma passed away. Uh -huh. And then like, um, originally I did want his grandma in it, but he, did, he didn't let me know. So then um, I just thought it was just the best for him to tell the story, because I think that like internally, there's this one part where I was wondering, was like, um, like how does it feel to like know the chords, uh -huh. like the placement, but you, you just can't do it. Yeah. So then I, I think only he could explain that to right. me. Right. So then that's why I just wanted to him. And we only had five minutes to. The do documentary, <laughs> you know, in, in news, we, we take out parts that we can, because we're so constrained by time, we mm -hmm. take out parts that we can say mm -hmm. quicker and more efficiently ourselves. But when you do documentary, it, it, it 
it, you walk a fine line between doing a disservice to your to your subject because it's all subjective sound. Mm -hmm. And so really they're the only ones that that can say this. So what did you learn since this was you know, a little bit different than other projects that you worked on. What did you learn about storytelling? How did this project maybe change your view of storytelling or improve how you tell stories? Um, it definitely changed. Well, first, like this project, I mainly, so there's one shoot where I had a lot of help and, uh -huh. the, and the rest of it I just did completely by myself. So um, that really stretched me. Like I had to make sure everything's good. I had to run like two cameras by myself, run audio and conduct the interview. <laughs> it was really stressful, but I got through it. Um, um, but yeah, I, I think it was just, I think it really pushed me to use everything I've learned up until this point because it gave me a reason why, like, like why not? Yeah. You know? You could come to, you could go do my job. That's why I do <laughs> run the camera, I do the interview, and then I get back and I'm like, oh, God, sorry, your microphone wasn't on. Uh, uh, how did you, because you only have five minutes, mm -hmm. how did you, we call it killing your babies, how did you get rid of parts that maybe you really wanted to include? Um, I don't know if it's going to make it. I just, I drank. <laughs> I took, I took uh, yeah, no, so what happened was like, I, I got to a point, I got, I cut it down to nine minutes. Okay. I drank a little bit, took a break from it, came back and acted like I'm not even part of the story. I'm like, yeah. I'm just, I'm just cut, 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 cut. So, That's yeah. a really good strategy <laughs> yeah. to sort of look at it from a neutral perspective of what's, what's the most impactful in how mm. to tell the story. Well, I cannot wait to see it in its entirety, and I can't wait to, you know, see more stories from you. Jason Duong, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, no problem. November is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Up next, CCARE joins us with some important information for cancer screening and treatment. That's next.